Hey everyone, it's me, Doomlink, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. It is currently part 20 for my Let's Play, and it was the 6th of October 2017 when I was originally recording this video. As I am recording this post-commentary, which I hope you've managed to work out that it is a post-commentary by now. If you haven't, then I suppose you're not paying attention. But this is indeed a post-commentary, and as I am recording it, it is the 22nd of December 2017. So, you know... Typical reason as to why I'm doing a post commentary. Wasn't necessarily happy with the result of the commentary for this video. It's only going to be for this video, fortunately, that I will be doing a post commentary because this was just a single recording on its own. Uh, it seems that for this Let's Play in particular, I have been doing double recordings, so two videos for one recording. And uh, yeah, but in this case, it has just been a single recording with one single video. But either way, uh, we just picked up a key there, which is going to be quite important for us returning to the undead... No, I was going to say the undead burg. That's definitely not where we are returning to. We are returning to the undead asylum, which is, of course, the first area that we enter in the entire game. <clears throat> Pretty much where you start and where you fight the asylum demon, as he is called. So in this video, we will be returning to that area. And there are a few benefits to actually returning to this place. Um, one of them is that there is a ring present there that we will, of course, be getting. I will mention that to get that ring, you do need to pick up the key that we just picked up there. It is the F2 West key, I believe. But, uh, yeah, it's just on top of that house, and the ring itself is the rusted iron ring. It basically allows you to move unhindered in places like, uh, you know, shallow water. You can move at normal pace. You can move around in the tar pits. At Sen's Fortress, kind of like in the base of Sen's Fortress. And, um, yeah, that's the benefit of that ring. And then the second reason why you would probably go there is because there is a stray demon boss. He is referred to as a stray demon. He's basically a powered up version of the first boss that you fight in the area, which is the Asylum Demon. This guy has a bigger, well, not necessarily a bigger weapon. It's kind of like they both have pretty big weapons, to be fair, but at the very least, the uh, Stray Demon is going to be hitting you for a lot more damage with his weapon, and it also has a shockwave. You'll see either way I will be fighting him here. But the benefit to fighting the Stray Demon is that you can actually get a free Titanite Slab, and Titanite Slabs in this game are very difficult to get if you know anything about that. Uh, yeah. Pretty much the guaranteed slab that you get for every single run comes from the Stray Demon, so he is generally the primary reason why you would be returning to the undead asylum. I was going to say the undead parish this time. I must be losing my mind. But anyway, um, we are now approaching the third reason why you would probably come here. Not, I would say probably those three things were not in order. I would say that uh, primarily you would come here for the stray demon, then the ring, then probably these knights. But it does depend on your particular run. I will mention that these knights do indeed drop red tight knight chunks. Now if you're doing, for instance, a chaos weapon path from earlier on in the game, so let's say you uh, go and grab the chaos ember pretty early on, just kind of before you fight ceaseless discharge in that area, it's one of those things that you can get if you kill yourself and all of that business. It's one of those things that you can access early on, but it's not ideal to access it early on, if you know what I'm talking about. It's something that, if you know about it, you can get it, but it's kind of, there are negative aspects to it. But there are definitely plenty of positives, and the biggest one, of course, would be that you have a chaos weapon earlier on in the game. And what that means is that you'll probably be wanting some red tight night chunks kind of early on in the game as well. The benefit to this area is that you can actually get those red tight night chunks from the Black Knights at pretty much any time when you return to this place, and uh, there you go, I got smashed in the face by a giant boulder. I kind of forgot that it had repositioned itself at the top of those stairs, and uh, I suffered as a result. But anyway, um, yeah, what we're doing at this stage is just going back around here, and we will soon be reaching a door that requires the key that we picked up on the roof of that building in Filing Shrine. And on the other side of that door, you will find something. Something that I was referring to before, the first reason that I mentioned, personally, that you would actually come to the Undead Asylum for the second time, or returning there, whatever you want to say. 
Uh, as you can see, this guy is turtling me really hard and it's really bothering me. And as you're about to see, at the exact same time that I attack him, he attacks me and that just really bothered me. I mean, it would bother you too, I'm sure. But anyway, I really don't like those guys because sometimes, yeah, they just don't want to attack you. And they will attack you when you go and attack them, you know, it's just... It has happened before, but anyway... Once we use that key that we picked up in Filing Shrine, we can go and pick up the uh, the Rusted Iron Ring. You can't get it anywhere else in the game. And, uh, yeah, there's only one per playthrough, but I can't imagine why you would want two in total. It's kind of a bit redundant, but anyway. What we will do now is drop down here. There's no boss like it was in the original, I guess, uh, confrontation. Well, you know, the first time we dropped down there when we were originally here, there was a confrontation no longer. In fact, we have to actually drop down through here to fight the next level boss. Now, you need to make sure that you at least have your shield up when that shockwave is coming. Every single time almost he attacks with that weapon, he's going to create a shockwave. I think there are... Well, there's like one attack that he does with that weapon that doesn't create a shockwave, but the rest will create a shockwave, so you need to be pretty careful. As you can see, shockwaves do play a bit of a part here. When this guy slams down, he will also create a small shockwave, which I'm shielding there. And uh, this one here in particular will be a large shockwave that you need to avoid. You can kind of get an idea for the range of that based on the uh, pillars being destroyed there. But anyway, yeah, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say the Stray Demon is too difficult. I would just say that as long as you've got a decent shield, you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, simply because, you know, as you can see right there, I'm just trying to get in as quickly as possible. So I can get one hit in, then back away. Having a good shield definitely helps with that. Rolling through that shockwave is, to my memory, not very easy because it's not just one single thing that you're rolling through. You will have that window of your roll in which you will be safe, but unfortunately because the attack is like a constant shockwave that lasts for maybe a second or so, you will still get hit when you try to roll through it. That's my knowledge of it. I could be getting confused with other similar attacks, but I believe that's the case with that particular weapon. As you can see, those strikes that the Stray Demon is doing there isn't... well, they're not creating a shockwave, but uh, I believe those are the only attacks that he does that do not create a shockwave. So as you can see, I am pretty well leveled at this stage, and he is taking some time to die, so I would not recommend coming down here to fight the Stray Demon until you're probably around soul level 45, 50, something like that. I can't remember my current soul level as you see me here, but it's possibly around 60, 65, I really don't know. Uh, of course, soul level does not necessarily dictate the damage of your weapon, but at the very least it will have something to do with your physical defense, and uh, I don't know if you've noticed so far, but taking a direct hit from this shockwave hurts a lot for me. And I've got pretty good armor right now, it's fully upgraded to my knowledge actually, this armor set that I've got here, and it's got the Habble's leggings as well for additional poison defense. And whatever soul level, level I'm at, ah, God, if I could speak, my God, I'm losing my uh, speech a big, in a big way. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's say way a few more times. That was a tight night slab right there, which is very nice. It's always very useful to have a tight night slab. It is quite difficult to get them manually through different means to that. But uh, as you can see, there is actually a return point here to the very beginning of the Undead Asylum. This is where we actually first started. You can actually look through the grate there and see the Stray Demon at the very beginning of the game, which is interesting. I don't really remember if I pointed that out in my Let's Play here, like in the first part, either in the first build or the second build. I can't really remember, but I possibly did, and you are able to see the Stray Demon at that point, even though you wouldn't be fighting him at that stage. But anyway, there is another Black Knight here. I don't think he drops a red chunk, this one. No, he does. There you go. Getting lots of Black Knight pieces here. Now, that peculiar doll that we just picked up, I suppose that makes it a fourth reason why you would actually return to the Undead Asylum. Uh, this fourth reason pertains to an optional area called the Painted World of Ariamis, which I think I have mentioned before in this Let's Play, and it's pretty much my plan to go to the Painted World in the next video, I'm quite sure. 
So uh, you can always double check. You can look in the suggested videos and just see if it's the painted wall that I'm going to in the next video. But, um, you know, if you care enough, but I'm pretty sure that I am going to be doing that. And to actually enter the painted world, you do need to pick up that peculiar doll at the very start of the game. I believe that it will just be sitting there as soon as you return. It doesn't matter if you return before, you know, doing whatever area. I don't think there's a prerequisite apart from the fact that you're just returning into that uh, nest. But anyway, we will now be going to the original nest that we approached. And we will go and be taken away by the giant crow person. I don't know why I'm saying person. It's not a person at all. But anyway, I think that after this, there's some kind of uh, silence in my original commentary, so I might be looking at something. Not too sure yet. The silence isn't here yet, but uh, anyway, possibly... Oh, that's... Uh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, this this really sucks. Um, I think I did this twice, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm going to be real. I did this twice in a row, and I can't remember if I lost my soul or not, but... Um, yeah, I'll see you guys back at that point. I don't know where it's even going to respawn me, to be honest with you, but, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys back at that point. All right, so to my knowledge, what actually happens here is the exact same thing that happened before. Let's listen to my original commentary for this. Where is it then? <gasps> no, 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 no! I can't lose that again! Fuck! I've just lost eight humanity. I have no more humanity, guys. Okay, um, that was... Wow, okay, um... Yeah, so that <laughs> that's my original commentary for you. I was not impressed at all about this scenario. This is just ridiculous. I don't know why I managed to do this, and yet I lost the last of my humanity. I lost, I think it was, 40,000 souls, which is not good at all at this stage in the game. So I've lost 8 humanity, 40,000 souls. I don't have any more humanity because, of course, I did consume all of the humanity that I had to put it in the counter so that I could actually grind for Twinkling Titanite in the Ash Lake area. And as you can see, I've got one humanity in my inventory at this stage. So, yeah, seriously, I was fucking annoyed right here. I was just... Oh, my God. Anyway, um... Yeah, I don't really know how I managed to bounce back from this. I guess you just need to shut up and deal with it. But, uh, yeah, that's the nature of Dark Souls sometimes. You know, you do something stupid enough times and you'll you'll really start to regret it. But, um, yeah, anyway. So at this stage I'm going into Sen's Fortress. Not really sure why, you know. I'm not looking ahead in the video to see what actually happens because, to be honest with you, that makes the post-commentary a little bit more annoying for me, personally, because ultimately I don't really enjoy doing post-commentaries in general, but if I haven't actually seen the original recording for a long time, it makes it a little bit more tolerable for me, you know, I can kind of still experience something somewhat new, you know, first time I've seen the recording, so therefore I'm not wanting to, uh, you know, put a bullet through my head, because I really don't enjoy post-commentaries personally, but, you know, that's just me. I just like to engage with the things happening on the screen live as it's happening. It's a little bit more engaging in my opinion. So it seems that at this stage I'm going to be taking on the Titanite Demons, or more specifically the Prowling Demons. They have an official name which is Prowling Demon. They are not called Titanite Demons, that's more of a colloquialism that exists in the game. At this stage I'm just equipping whatever works, you know, whatever I can manage without using Havel's Ring, because of course I am quite reliant upon Havel's Ring to be able to move, because I haven't really upgraded my endurance as much as I probably should, but uh, yeah, of course that will be an... Uh, what am I trying to say? That will definitely be on the agenda at the very least. Soon. It will be on the agenda soon. Because I just wanted to first and foremost get my strength and dexterity to 30, and then I would focus on the major things like uh, vitality and endurance of course endurance is one of those things that when you're a newer souls player you don't really have much appreciation for it i remember that in demon souls because that was the first game that i played in the soul series back in 2009 i remember that i didn't really have much of an appreciation for endurance i think endurance at that stage gave you additional equip load as well as this game and then vitality in demon souls gave you more item burden but of course item burden was removed for this game but, uh, yeah, as far as equip burden is concerned, an increased um, stamina 
it was the same in Demon Souls. And, you know, I didn't really have too much appreciation for that at all. It just... I don't know, by the way, if it's recording the system audio, because I'm getting Discord notifications. Hopefully it's not uh, doing that. But anyway, um, yeah, seriously, upgrading your endurance, or more specifically, upgrading your stamina is actually really, really useful. Because, let's say, for instance, you're relying on a shield. In the case of a shield, to be honest, the length of your stamina bar is going to directly correlate with the effectiveness of your shield, because, you see, shielding something is going to... Uh, I guess, reduce your stamina. I guess a confrontation like this is a great example because you are going to be pretty reliant on your shield's ability to, I guess, take hits. One benefit to this shield is that it has really high stability, which means that it doesn't take too much of your stamina from you when you actually guard a hit. And you can see here that the longer my stamina bar is, the more attacks I can take and also the more times I can attack personally, because of course, if all of my stamina is being drained from actually receiving these attacks, I'm not going to be able to attack back myself, so that's going to be a huge problem. So therefore, not only is your defensive capability completely reliant upon your stamina bar's length, but it's also your offensive capability that is going to be affected by your stamina bar's length. So therefore, for a new player, it is very important to understand that uh, stamina bar increases are very useful and very important and uh, I think most people would understand that by now in this game's lifespan I think most people have played the Soul series before because it uh, got a huge surge of popularity in 2014 to my memory when Dark Souls 2 came out or in other words when the Soul series took a dive but uh, we won't get into that that's one of my typical rants that I go on in my videos but um, yeah, honestly, stamina is very important, and uh, I would say that stamina becomes more and more important the heavier your build is going to be. So if you're using, like, really heavy weapons, you're probably going to want a lot more stamina than you normally would for, say, like, lighter weapons, because, you see, the heavier your weapon, the more stamina is actually going to be... I guess, taken from your stamina bar with each attack. So I would say that with a curved greatsword like this, it's going to be about the same as a regular greatsword. So you have greatswords and curved greatswords. They're going to do a pretty decent amount of... Uh, well, they're going to reduce a lot of your stamina with each attack compared with, say, a light sword, like maybe um, a bolder side sword, for instance, a nice, fast, light attacking weapon. And then, of course, when you have an ultra greatsword, that's going to take even more of your stamina away from you. And uh, ultimately, even if you're hiding behind a great shield, you will be capitalizing on defense. So if you've got a weapon that uh, takes away a lot of your uh, stamina as it attacks, and if you've also got a shield where you're going to be relying on, I guess, uh, shielding a lot, because, for instance, with a heavier build, you're not going to be as mobile, therefore you will be taking more hits, additional stamina is going to become even more important to you because, of course... <laughs> there is going to be a huge deal uh, capitalizing on your stamina. As in, you know, you've got your shield and your weapon really doing a number on your stamina, so, yeah. That is the benefit to stamina, ultimately. And then also your equipment burden. Don't think anything needs to be said about that. And there's a clear benefit to that as well, so, yeah. Some people, I think, you know, more new players, I can speak from experience because I was the same. I always thought, oh, you know, health is going to be more useful because, you know, I can take more hits and that's going to give me more, I guess, uh, leeway. But at the same time, stamina is kind of... Let's look at it in this way. Health is your ability to make a lot of mistakes. Stamina is your ability to avoid making the mistakes in the first place. That's what I found. So, well, you know, calling them mistakes is one way to put it. I guess, at the very least, your ability to avoid negative situations is going to be, I guess, raised. Or at the very least, your probability of entering those situations or getting in those situations will be lessened if you do have good stamina versus good health. Good health is if you'd prefer to just take the hits and deal with it, but uh, stamina is for the people who would prefer to just not have that issue <laughs> entirely. Just no need to sponge hits, just keep away, you know. Either hide behind a good shield and have a lot of stamina to allow that shield to take a lot of hits, or 
have a lot of stamina so you can do a whole lot of rolling. That's the idea. So anyway, I don't know, you know, because I don't have much else to talk about, I'm just being informative at this stage, uh, telling you things that you probably don't need to know. I'm not necessarily uh, hugely philosophical about the game, it's just, you know, random knowledge that I thought that I might share with you in case you weren't familiar with it. I personally think you are familiar with it, but at the very least, if you are a Souls player, it might be a nice idea to further, I guess, instill that information in you. But as you can see, now that we have picked up four... Titanite, uh, no, Demon Titanite, that's what I was trying to say. We have fully upgraded our... Oh god, I didn't even get a chance to double check the stats there. So 442 with the spear, which is pretty decent. I don't mind that at all. Of course, it would be better if it were pure physical damage, as I've mentioned before. Um, pure physical versus uh, physical, well, half physical, half elemental of course, the benefit to the physical is that um, it's just, that's the amount of damage you're going to be doing. Simple as that. Whereas with the uh, elemental damage, that's going to be dependent upon the individual defenses of the enemy that you're going up against. So if they have high lightning resistance, 440, whatever damage it was, is going to be more or less depending on who you're attacking. But anyway, it seems that the video is ending right now. So I'll see you guys in part 21, where my original commentary will resume. Catch you guys later.